Hi, this is Lucy. It's Words Wednesday. Um, this week, I'm going to be reading a poem called Water from Robert Lowell. Last week, I did Elizabeth Bishop and her amazing poem, um, which I'm literally blanking on the name of right now. Little Exercise, yes. And I read her entire... <laughs> like every poem she's ever written in like a week and a half, which was incredibly stressful. So from now on, when I'm reading a book that's a poetry book that's over like a hundred pages, I'm gonna give myself two weeks to do that. So I can kind of marinate in it and not feel like I'm in grad school again. Um, but I really, I mean, I loved the experience of reading all of Bishop's poems and I'm like a quarter through Robert Lowell's now. And in between, I went to see this amazing play here at the Seattle Rep called Dear Elizabeth which was a basically dramatization of Robert Lowell and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bishop's like epic friendship and letter writing correspondence. And I found out a lot about them individually, like their personal lives and also how stuff that happened in their friendships affected literally poems that they wrote and how they would send each other snippets of poems and manuscripts and how they reacted to, to each other's work and revered each other's work. So, um, I also learned Elizabeth Bishop was an alcoholic, which I didn't know. I learned that Robert Lowell had, it wasn't just like a platonic love for Elizabeth Bishop, who's a lesbian. Like he professes love for her and it kind of caused a mini rift between them. Very salacious stuff. But um, the poetry is incredible. And one of the most amazing, fascinating things I learned was that a really famous Robert Lowell poem called Water, the one I'm gonna read for you, was written about this kind of seminal event and coming together and cementing of the friendship moment. You've ever had one of those? Um, that, Eliz that Elizabeth Bishop and Robert Lowell experienced in Stonington, Maine, which is the town in Maine right near my summer house that I've been to millions and zillions of times that I've been coming to ever since I was born. It's a tiny, tiny fishing town, lobstering town. Um, the fact that that's where this took place is pretty incredible. And actually, they both spent a lot of time in Penobscot Bay, where Stonington is located and um, in the area. So that makes them both even a little more special to me. And he wrote about Maine even more than she did, because he was largely like New England and New York based for most of his life, but she traveled around a lot more. Um, like her elegy poem, which I read last week, was... No, I didn't read it in the in this video thing, but I read it and loved it. It's called North Haven, and it, they they read it in the play, or Elizabeth, the woman who played Elizabeth Bishop in the play read it, and it was just so sad and beautiful. And it's called North Haven, and it, North Haven is in Maine, and it's about like meditating there on on Robert Lowell's death after he died. But on to Robert Lowell, um, this is water, and it's so good. Ugh, it's so good. Okay, water. It was the main lobster town. Each morning, boatloads of hands pushed off for granite quarries on the islands and left dozens of bleak white frame houses stuck like oyster shells on a hill of rock. And below us, the sea lapped the raw little matchstick mazes of a weir where the fish for bait were trapped. Remember? We sat on a slab of rock. From this distance in time, it seems the color of iris rotting and turning purpler. But it was only the usual gray rock turning the usual green when drenched by the sea. The sea drenched the rock at our feet all day and kept tearing away flake after flake. One night you dreamed you were a mermaid clinging to a wharf pile and trying to pull off the barnacles with your hands. We wished our two souls might return like gulls to the rock. In the end, the water was too cold for us. So pretty, pretty incredible stuff. Um, and then her poem is, is North Haven. You know what? I'm going to read that for you now. Okay. Sorry. Hold on. Mm. Oh, oh. 
and we're back. In grad school, I did all my work in my bed, and it was so comfortable. My friends would come over, we'd just like sit and hang out, and everyone called it the cloud because it was like the most angelic, soft, yummy situation. But anyway, this is um, this is North Haven. Boop, 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 boop. I know, super, super organized, right? Um, ah. So she wrote this when he died. So it's called North Haven. In memoriam, Robert Lowell. And the first stanza, when I do this, that means that the kind of first stanza, which was written by him, is over. And now we're on to her poem. Okay. I can make out the rigging of a schooner a mile off. I can count the new cones on the spruce. It is so still, the pale bay wears a milky skin. The sky, no clouds, except for one long carded horse's tail. The islands haven't shifted since last summer, even if I like to pretend they have, drifting in a dreamy sort of way, a little north, a little south, or sidewise, and that they're free within the blue frontiers of bay. This month, our favorite one is full of flowers, buttercups, red clover, purple vetch, hawkweed still burning, daisies pied, eye bright, the fragrant bed straws, incandescent stars, and more returned to paint the meadows with delight. The goldfinches are back or others like them and the white-throated sparrows five note song pleading and pleading brings tears to the eyes. Nature repeats herself or almost does. Repeat, 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 revise, revise, revise. Years ago, you told me it was here in 1932. You first discovered girls and learned to sail, and learned to kiss. You had such fun, you said, that classic summer. Fun, it always seemed to leave you at a loss. You left North Haven, anchored in its rock, afloat in mystic blue, and now you've left for good. You can't derange or rearrange your poems again, but the sparrows can their song. The words won't change again. Sad friend, you cannot change. Um, so kind of a downer of a note to leave you guys on, but I think those two poems really speak to the depth of their relationship um, and then also how that ties into the landscape of Maine and the beautiful, beautiful seascape I love. So. Um, that's about it for this Words Wednesday, and thanks for joining. And I'm sorry I took you on a magical journey beneath my bed to find a book. And we just watched Battle Royale, so I'm a little, like, scattered right now, because it's that's a different kind of seascape, let me tell you. Anyway, um, thanks for coming, and <laughs> I hope to see you next week. Bye.